G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Well, good day viewers, welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well, we are in the Bay of Plenty in New Zealand at Tauranga, and I'm with a lovely lady, Doreen McNeil. Welcome to the nice show. Nice to meet you, Graham. It's wonderful to be here. Now, Doreen has a fascinating history. Um, obviously, you've been painting for a long, long time. A long time. But uh, this is a lady that sort of came through the Second World War and then ended up coming from there. Yeah, I mean, you always had a great love of art, even as a child, Oh, didn't yeah, you? I loved painting, yeah. painting and drawing and, and you, colour. You, the, the thing was that in England in those days, I mean, obviously after the war, there really wasn't many places that you could go to where you could learn art. No, nowhere at all no. that I could find. All, all I found was somewhere who was teaching me to draw from little plaster, plaster casts yeah. in pencil on small pieces of paper, and really just telling me to draw, and that was it. And I wanted colour in my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> funnily enough. But you went on to do uh, cartography and uh, aerial drawings for, for aircraft. Yeah, well, I, the closest I could get to any co sort of art work was mm -hmm. uh, as a draftsman. Yeah. And um, I ended up with a, a navigation company which had this new system for um, guiding aircraft. Yeah. And that was, I really enjoyed it. It was so exciting. It was a new. Um, form of navigation, but the work was tight and tedious. Yeah. Not no, not tedious, but tight and meticulous. Yeah. And I really wanted to let loose and paint, which I couldn't do there. Yeah. You moved to the Bahamas in the fifties, was it? Yeah. Fifties, and then late fifties, uh, and then found a lady there that obviously started to teach you yes. what you wanted to know. But obviously, coming from that really tight um, experience with the maps. Um, Doreen is one of the grand dames of abstract art in New Zealand these days, so uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a real privilege to be here. But uh, we're, what, that's what we're going to do today, we're going to do some of your abstract works, um, one or two, and we'll see how we go through the day, uh, and then just make a, make a great start. But this is, this is your work's really from the heart, in many senses. Yeah, I, I just put down some colour and see what happens. Once you've got one colour down, then things start to happen and yeah. oh, I need another colour and move it around. And I play. I just love playing with paint. And it, it's childish, I suppose, but I Not love it. Not at all. Well, you just see what happens. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's, let's make a start on it and we'll see where this goes because it's going to be very interesting. I mean, one of the great abstract artists from New Zealand. This is going to be a great day. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, well you've, you use really fluid acrylics. Yes, I, li I like the runny acrylics much better. I like to let the, the colours run into each other rather than, not all the time, but most of the time. Yeah. And um, oh, I also use, for white, I use quite a lot of um, gesso rather okay. than white. Oh, is that right? Okay. Because it's more um, opaque. Yes, and I've noticed that the, that the colours you got there are actually from a local manufacturer. Yeah, they're purity colours, purity. made locally, and they're very reasonably priced. Yeah. I also use Atelier yeah. um, tube colours, and they mix in perfectly well with, with these as well. So, okay. oh, a bit of orange, I think. I wanted to put on a bit of phthalo blue, and I always like to add a little bit of yellow ochre, yellow ochre. just to give it a slightly greenish tinge. Just, just see what happens. Pour on a bit of water. Oh, I'll use a lot of spray. 
water, just water, yep. mostly. Then flick a bit so you don't get too even a coat everywhere. And it, that gives you some lovely textures. And when you when you end. put the paint down, you just you, you're just moving with the paint. Yeah. You just it's telling a story to you, and then you just work with it. I'm just seeing what colour wa wants to go with what. Yeah. Um, that was a bit bit yellow, so a little bit warmer there. Because that orange and phthalo blue go beautifully together. Plenty of water. Plenty of water, and I don't. In my painting, I don't really like brush strokes too much, so I tend to get it wet and then move it around with a knife. Push it around. Oh, it feels lovely to be, <laughs> be painting. I've been, not been painting for a few days, and it's just lovely just messing around with the paint. There you go. Well, you've been doing it for quite a while. I mean, you've been painting for nearly 50 years. Or, 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 or it is That's 50 true, years, but, yeah. But um, it's probably the last... Only the last 10 to 15 years that I've really felt I can do what I want with it. Yeah. I mean, learning to paint abstractly and, well, just learning to paint in any way at all yeah. is a long, difficult process. And it took me a long while before I could feel happy with what I was doing, that I enjoyed the results. And at the moment, it's just playing until something starts to look good. And then it just sort of talks to you. Yeah, it does. A yeah. mm. little bit of bright yellow now, I think. Purity yellow. That's a lighter colour and livening it up a bit more. Who has actually influenced you in your in your abstract style? Is there any uh, specific artists at all? I mean, I know that Turner was one of them, but um, what about contemporaries? There's an American Chinese lady, Catherine Chang Lu. Yeah. And I, I just love her work. She does a lot of drawing in it. It's probably not like what I do at the moment at uh -huh. all. In fact, she doesn't use a lot of colour. I don't know why so much why I'm really drawn to her work, but I always have since I first saw it. And whenever I see a group of paintings, um, like on, on the web, you're looking at some art, some um, abstract work, and occasionally I see hers. And before I realise it's hers, oh, I like that one. And the other one is Richard Diebenkorn, okay. an American um, abstract artist, and I also sees again. S s Oh, I like that. It's by him. Mm -hmm. It's incredible how the well-known masters really stand out. So what, what influences and motivates you with your work? I mean, you did suggest nature at one stage, but there, I think it goes a lot beyond that for you. There's an, uh, often an element of, of nature, and I particularly like um, aerial views. Mm -hmm. uh, rather that, you know, there's, and it's probably be because I was once drawing charts for aircraft, as yeah. I think you mentioned earlier. Yes. I don't know why, because I didn't fly that much with the job, but I, I've always enjoyed looking down whenever I'm in an aeroplane, particularly in the Bahamas when we were there. The, the water from above is just absolutely fantastic. The turquoise blues and, and, and greens, and oh, it's just incredible. You've got, uh, you know, we screen up some of the pictures and Journey is one that comes to mind. And it sort of looks, looks like you're looking down over the landscape once again. Yeah. Those browns and caramels. A few I've done lately, I've been almost like looking up at the stars. I've, it's a similar sort of feeling. Uh -huh. You either look down, looking horizontally, it's not, nothing like as interesting as up or down. Yeah. But. Oh, there you go. Now, I've just noticed you look up to the ceiling and you've actually got a mirror on the ceiling. Yeah, well, because I work flat, you mm. can't see it from a distance. Yeah. And as most artists will tell you, you need to keep stepping back. Yeah which doesn't help here, but if I can look up into the ceiling. There you go. I'm, uh, and you've got a I mirror can, up there. I can check it. That's fascinating. I'd like to put in a little bit of crayon now. Do you think you could pass sure. me that box of crayons? Sure, I've got some crayons, crayons over here screen. for you. There you go. Lovely, thanks. There we go. These are Caran d'Ache, well used, as you can see. Yeah. Um, Water-soluble crayons. Oh, OK. And they mix beautifully with um, acrylic. You get different textures. I don't often leave them like that. I usually then paint paint into them. Just experimenting with the different textures. I just play around till I find something I like. And yeah. it, 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 it sounds, sounds silly, but I paint because I enjoy doing it. And so it's fun to me. Yeah. Oh, look at that lovely orange. 
I'm just being completely free. But you were saying like before of, about uh, living in England and then moving to the Bahamas, there was such a sense of freedom. That's true. Oh, when I was there, it was quite a tight society and you, you always feel restricted as you had to explain what you were doing, why, why you were doing it. I felt, it's probably not true, but I never felt completely free. When I went to the Bahamas, it's a completely different way of life. You do what you want, when you want. Obviously, there are, <laughs> there are social restrictions, but for the most part, the heat and the, the warmth and the fact that you're wearing less clothes alone makes you feel freer and happier and more able to splash paint around instead of drawing tight little aircraft charts. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not denigrating that because I love doing that work. It was exciting when I was doing it, but I love this much more. And I really feel it's me, that I, my upbringing was fairly restricted with just because I was in England. And I found English life restricting. Silly, I know, because I probably didn't live a very restricted life, but I live a much less one now. I've now got some spots here where I sprayed, which don't look right. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll just smooth those out a bit. Getting a bit of a muddy colour here, but when you've got bright colours, you need some soft areas where the colour is a bit not so bright and, and, and um, demanding. You need a few, a few areas of softer, greyer colour to, to make the bright colours stand out. And I've got it a little bit muddy now, so I think I will actually scrape that right back. So that that brush is as stiff as a board. Yeah, this is um, a rubber brush or it's rubber, acry is it okay? acrylic or whatever you call it. Yeah. It's it's like a. And it's and it's that's what it's really meant for. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, I just thought it looked interesting, and it doesn't work for putting paint on, but it's very good for taking it off. Oh, okay. There you go. And I'll come back to that nice turquoise colour that I had before which had got lost. With your work, how do, you, how do you judge when you feel it's finished? Oh, gut instinct, that's all. Yeah. And I leave them hanging up in, in the um, living room, usually, when I've got to the stage where I think they're nearly finished. And it, I, I just keep looking at them, and if I feel, oh, no, that's, that's not quite right, or if nothing bothers me, then I reckon it's finished. What I very often do, I get some varied colours in, quite wet. I put some cellophane on. Oh yeah. And um, what, what I find, this is cellophane, what I do find best is the, um, when you get books in the post, Yes. they're covered in this. Yes. And it's lovely because it's not as, as flexible as cling wrap yeah. and it's not as stiff as uh, cellophane. Yes. So you can, you can move it around. See the texture's coming up now. You can't be sure what's going to happen when it's when it's dry, and yeah. you have to leave it to dry. So I'll just move around and do a little bit of painting up here while that dries. And then you just sort of pull it up, and all those textures stay on the yeah. the canvas itself. That's amazing. And then maybe an orange crayon. These are water soluble. These crayons. Yeah. Yeah. You've got some other really striking pieces that I've um, seen in your uh, your studio. Reverie as well, I think, is a fantastic piece. And then Lava, which I greatly like. I think that's, that's fantastic. And then uh, Out of the Blue. I've got a piece that's got the blue, all the blues coming through. It's a fantastic piece as well. And then, and then Flare Up, which is like two, two amoebas joining together yeah. with reds and blacks all through it. That's pretty dramatic uh, A lot well. of people said it looks like the top of a volcano, which yeah. I think... It was a bit in my mind, I don't know, mm -hmm. but there really is sort of something flaring up out of it. It's, a, it's a, Definitely, yeah, I enjoyed yeah. that one. That's Definitely. one of my most recent, actually. Yeah. You do a lot of small acrylic sketches that are very affordable as well. I mean, you, yes, I love playing with those. Yeah, and they're on, they're on paper as well. On paper, but, but with gesso on it. Yeah. Because with just paper itself, the, the paint starts soaking in like watercolour and you get a very different feel to painting it on, on gesso. So I always put the gesso onto the paper. Yeah. And that gives you a lovely firm surface to work on as well. Okay, Doreen, well, we've let that dry for a while now, so what do we do from here? Well, take this off. 
See, there's a bit of a pattern there, which is not great, but it's it's different to brush strokes, yeah. which is what I like. And I, I do feel now I need a bit of colour in this area to balance over here. This yeah. is a bit white and wishy, wishy washy, and I've got a um, I've got a folder of co coloured bits of paper, which I often when I've got to a point where I need a new colour and I'm not sure what. I get bits of paper out like this and lay them on, see maybe what would good, what would look good. No, not like. So do you use the paper on there or just oh, use no, it as a guide? No, this is just to see what would look, Okay. what might look good. Okay, so we've just collected this paper over the years, have you? Yeah, um, yeah. bits when I used to paint on um, paper a lot, you know, a lot of the um, bits of paint, painting look good, so yeah. I keep them. It's a sort of compositional tool too. Yeah. You know, do I need any straight lines or shall I keep this loose and, and organic? Yeah. I think it doesn't want straight. So, but I do think a bit of just a warm colour up there would, would help. So in fact, the easiest thing about this board, you just turn it around and uh, I'll put a bit of uh, warmer colour in there. Okay. So light glaze over this um, texture from the um, transparency yeah. makes quite interesting patterns. And this is where I could use those crayons again. Well, do you mostly use the crayons on the side or do you use the point of the crayons? Nearly well? always on the side, but okay. it, I mean, when I've got nearer the end I might want some lines, in yeah. which case I'll, I'll draw some lines in. Uh -huh. Well, these, these are all effects that you'd never get if you tried to plan them. Yeah. They just happened because I've, I've let the paint do what it wants. But yeah, this is coming. It's quite different to another, anyone I've done before, so it's... You've been influenced by the colour in your life, Tim. <laughs> I've always had colour in my life. You Couldn't can. live without it. So great to see it sort of come to life on, on TV. Yeah. It's, it's marvellous. Well, I, ne I need to stop on this now because I'm... I'm where it's all wet, I, I'm just... I'm going to get mud if I don't, don't stop. I need to let it dry and then have a think about it before I can really make a decision as to how I want it to finish up. So I'll just put this aside and I've got another one that I've worked on. Okay. I've got this one which I've worked on for some time and yep. decided what it needs now. And I've have done that by putting these bits of paper that I, I showed you before, I've got yeah. coloured paper. I've got a little bit in there which I felt needed a bit light. I also feel that that area needs to be a lot lighter than it is. So I'm going to I'm, I'm going to try white with um, some more some more um, paper over it, okay. so I get a mottled effect. But because it's it's well and truly dry, dry I'll get a better look than okay. I did before. And for this, I don't want a really solid white, so I use white paint rather than gesso. Okay. And. Uh, when I want it to blend in, I just wet them with water so it blends in without a, a line. And now I'm going to put the plastic over it. And because that's got a nice coat of paint underneath, it'll look much better than the previous one, which came out with the white gesso showing through. That's right. Now we'll leave that to dry. Yeah. And I've got to, I've decided I wanted just a bit more of the darker red down here. Yep. Yeah. So for that, I'm just going to put in a brief line roughly where it was, putting in some of the darker red. Don't want it too red, but just a darker colour which blends in with everything that's already there. Which sort of balances up with that area now. And again, yeah. I'm afraid I need some more plastic on. Okay. I'm a little bit reliant on plastic. I love using it because it, it gets rid of my brush strokes when I don't want them. Yeah. And also, it, it just gives you some unusual textures that you get no other way. The only thing is you have to be careful not to overdo it so that you don't all see that these textures everywhere. Right, I've got this plastic on now and it's going to take a while to dry, so I'll just try and see what happens with a hairdryer. Out. This one. Look at that. Looks all right. Not too much, just That's enough. Pretty That's good, great. doesn't it? That's great, yeah. So, here we go. Let's have a look at this. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That looks amazing, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a bit too patterny, so I think I'll... That is perfect as it is, so I'm not going to touch that. But here it's still a little bit wet, so I can soften it. Just take that those hard edges out, which I don't really want on yeah. here. 
Oh, now the only other thing, I've got this little bit of white here, I thought, or a, light, a little bit of light colour, I'll just put that in. Yeah. That was a bit of a greyish white, or greyish mauvey. It's not critical where it goes. I want to soften that down with a bit of plastic. Here we go again. We need more plastic. Yeah. But I mean, watching, watching you work and then seeing these patterns come out, and they're like little separate landscapes all through there. So it really gives you the essence of wanting to play. Well, that's what I'm, all I'm doing yeah. is playing. I, it, I just love playing. Okay, a second childhood probably. I yeah. don't know, but well, third or fourth or fifth <laughs> childhood more like. But it's um, it's just such fun. Yes, you can really let your imagination run, can't you? Well, the more you do, the more you think. Oh, yeah. Well, you can do this, and I can do that, and I know what will happen. Mm -hmm. And so the more you do, the easier it becomes, that's, that's the thing. Yeah, this one reminds me of literally looking right from above and seeing an ocean. Yeah. And you see the little lines going through and then the landforms and the, and the spit coming out. Uh, that wasn't intended. Oh, but there it is. Yeah. That's, uh, that's how often my paintings turn out. Yeah. That little sort of aerial view. And it, it's weird. I mean, it, say the only thing I can think of is because of... The job I had, although that I didn't fly that much with it. But Maybe it's just your spirit that does. That's right, it's my spirit flying up over the top. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> well, I think it's just about finished. It looks amazing. I mean, to me, it's as though you're in a satellite or a spaceship and you're slowly crossing the globe and you can see the aqua waters and the sand beaches and then the, the points coming out. It's just a fascinating piece of work, it really is. Okay guys, well that was a really fascinating day with Doreen and this is just amazing. I mean, when you look into this, it's as though, as I said, you're, you're floating in outer space. Yeah, Quite incredible. flying. Yeah, but thank you so much. Oh, thank you. That it's was... been a great day. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. It's putting just... more and more colour in my life. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but if people would like to come and see more of your work and even have a chat to you, what's your website address? It's doreenmcneil.co.nz Okay, doreenmcneil.co.nz uh, also, as always, you can come to colourinyourlife.com.au and our YouTube site, plenty of subscribers in there and we've got some fantastic DVDs out these days. And come into the, to the website and have a look because we've got some pretty amazing things happening in there these days. We've got webinars, resources, bonuses, we'll even have Doreen in there at some stage having a talk to the many fans across the world, so <laughs> definitely pop in and see us. Um, we've had a fantastic time in New Zealand, the people are amazing. We hope to get back here in the next couple of months to film some more people. But we're going to head off, but as we always say, remember guys, make sure you put some colour in your life. And we'll see you again. Bye now. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>